Hey people, Kevin Thomas from On Point Dogs. <clears throat> um, this is a follow-up video to my video about natural flea and tick remedies for working dogs and their humans. And lady left a comment <clears throat> on that uh, video. And she said nobody should use this formula, uh, that the concentration is way too high, and that the eucalyptus contained in the formula is toxic to dogs. And she cited two authority sources the um, Blue Cross and the ASPCA, you know, confirming that uh, eucalyptus is, is toxic in dogs. So that definitely had me pushing the pause button because I haven't researched this stuff in about two years, which is how long I've been using it. And I was like, wow, maybe some new information, you know, came out that wasn't available two years ago. Um, if those of you who are old enough to remember, you know, butter in the 70s, right? Butter was, was all the rage. It was supposed to be good for you. Then in the 80s, butter was bad for you. Then in the 90s, margarine is what you're supposed to be using. And then back in the 2000s, now all of a sudden, you know, butter is good for you again, right? So I was thinking, whoa, this might be a situation like that. So let me go take a second look at things. So let's go inside and uh, I'll show you what I found. So here now we're at the ASPCA website. This is one of the authority sources that was uh, cited by our commenter. And they say that uh, toxicity of eucalyptus toxic to dogs, cats, and horses. Clinical signs include salivation, vomiting, diarrhea, depression, or weakness. Then down here it says, if you suspect your pet may have ingested a potentially toxic substance, call the ASPCA. Operative word here, ingested, okay? That means taken orally, which is not what we're talking about. We're talking about topical use. There's nothing here in the ASPCA's website that says that um, using eucalyptus oil topically is harmful to your dog. Okay, now we're at the Blue Cross website, and you see it says plants very poisonous to dogs, and eucalyptus is one of the culprits listed. It says that the eating these, um, it says these plants and flowers are very poisonous to dogs and can even be fatal. There you down at the bottom, it says, if your dog eats a poisonous plant, call your vet immediately. If your dog eats a poisonous plant, eating be the operative word here. Again, nothing about using eucalyptus oil topically, and we're not talking about um, using the actual plant. I mean, I've had the actual plant here. It's hard to, it's hard to maintain it where I live. I'll tell you that. Um, you know, it's a plant that's native to Australia. And it's very difficult to simulate those conditions for the eucalyptus plant to thrive here. But anyway, we're talking about topical use of the oil. Blue Cross says nothing at all about a topical use of of um, of eucalyptus, right? So I've been using it on my skin for the past two years, and you got to figure that it's got to be a lot easier for this to permeate my skin than permeate a dog, because with the dog, you've got to go through the fur. Some of these dogs have a, a top coat and then an undercoat and then the skin. And again, like I said, I've been using it for two years on myself as well as on my dogs. Three different dogs over two years. Uh, to me, that overrides anything. You know, direct experience is what I'm always going to go is what I'm going to go for, unless I can find some type of uh, you know compelling in, um, evidence, data, research to the contrary. And I haven't found that. I mean, this is consistent with what I found two years ago. Uh, yeah, which is that um, eating it is bad, but topical use is no problem. This is what Dr. Eric Berg says about the benefits of eucalyptus oil. On his video entitled The Benefits of Eucalyptus, he said that it inhibits tuberculosis, MRSA, all the viruses, candida, as well as bacteria. So Dr. Berg further states that eucalyptus oil has anti-inflammatory properties, and for this reason, it has been used to treat patients that have arthritis, asthma, sinusitis. Uh, we know that the Aboriginal people of Australia have used it for centuries as an antiseptic to prevent infection in superficial wounds. I also spoke directly with um, Dr. Alvin Reed Mahoney, a prominent physician in Los Angeles, uh, he said that he uses eucalyptus on the skin as well as around the house. He says the anti-parasitic uh, uses of it are just uh, fantastic. 
and he said he's done a ton of research on it and there's no problem using it on the um, using it topically uh, as long as you're diluting it right now this website is from the cabbage town pet clinic which is a veterinarian clinic located um uh, somewhere in canada and they say many essential oils such as eucalyptus oil tea tree oil cinnamon oil etc cetera, etc cetera. these are straight up toxic to pets they are toxic whether they are applied to the skin used in diffusers or licked up in the case of a spill okay great uh where's your supporting evidence because if you don't have any supporting evidence then what you're doing is making an unsubstantiated claim claim you're making an unsubstantiated claim and someone like me is not going to just take your word for it so where are the dogs that had a, an adverse reaction to eucalyptus oil being applied topically where are those dogs where are the photos what conditions did they come down with and how did you treat those dogs and do you have a better alternative uh, to using a uh, eucalyptus oil of course you don't because allopathic veterinarians just like allopathic doctors are into prescription drugs surgery radiation and chemo unlike holistic doctors they are not into treating the cause they're into suppressing and treating managing symptoms if you go to a mainstream doctor complaining of a headache he will give you a medicine some type of prescription drug that will um take the pain away right but what does that have to do with treating the cause of the pain see that's what you need to do you need to treat the cause of the pain and this is what a holistic practitioner will do if you're stopping the pain the pain is just a symptom of an underlying condition that could be high blood pressure it could be even a tumor on the brain so i'll go with uh, natural holistic approaches uh, any day of the week they said something else down here interesting though let's see if i can find it they go on to say that there is some preliminary research largely funded by companies selling herbal infused pet products that suggest essential oils may have some health benefits for pets. This has resulted in some holistic veterinarians to include essential oil treatments into their practices. And they say that as far as they're concerned though, they don't incorporate this yet unproven therapy at their Cabbage Town Animal Hospitals. Instead, they recommend their Cabbage Town Care Preventative Care Program. Wow, that's a mouthful. Okay, so this is what they're offering. So let's go find out what, what that's about. Okay, so here we are. So their program for an adult dog, forty six fifty a month. It includes uh, annual vaccinations, one additional consultation per year, a fecal exam, blood screening, heartworm and tick screening, nails trimmed, discounts on various uh, procedures and things, including a discount on a, a magazine called uh, Go Fetch. Okay, so they're offering a heartworm and tick screening. So I guess after the screening, if your dog has ticks, you pay extra for the treatment. So what what is that treatment? I thought that's what they were going to give us, right? And there's nothing here mentioned about that. But um, you can rest assured it's probably going to be some type of uh, chemical, such as Frontline. And if you use Frontline, that's great, so long as you're making an informed decision. But what, Frontline ingested orally is not toxic? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Please. So they basically end by saying that we don't outright discourage the use of these oils, but we do suggest you proceed with caution. I mean, how crazy is that? You just said it was toxic. Uh, if you inhale it in a diffuser, if you apply it topically, and of course, if you ingest it, but yet you're not going to outright discourage the use of it? I mean, come on, man. That's so contradictory and confused. Let's get the hell out of there with that, with that nonsense. So a lot of things that they're saying, that there's no studies in this and that, is contradicted by a study that was done by uh, Cornell University. And I can't get my hands on the primary study right now, so you have to take this as uh, secondhand information. But they concluded that eucalyptus oil has excellent anti-parasitic properties, that it was very good at repelling fleas and ticks, that it also had uh, antimicrobial properties. And the microbes that they were talking about were uh, bacteria and um, fungus specifically. And uh, is there anything else? Yeah, I think that was it on, on the Cornell study. So 
I mean, I encourage everybody to do their own research, you know, your decision on on how you treat your dog, whatever way you decide to treat them, it should be, a, you know, an informed decision. So, you know, I feel like my decision was an informed decision, and I have two years of direct experience, you know, on on, on top of that now. So, um, you know, you've got to do what you think is, uh, is, is best for your pets. And I definitely appreciate and thank this commenter for uh, sounding the alarm for us because I know she was coming from a good place. And really, without her, her input, it would have never have occurred to me uh, to drastically reduce uh, you know, the concentration of the formula that I'm using. So the formula that I'm using is presently constituted. I believe that it uh, is overkill, which is why it works so well. But I don't believe that it has to be that strong, that it has to be that concentrated in order to get the results that I want. So why not reduce it? Why not reduce the concentration? By reducing the concentration, um, I'm going to make it even safer. I'm going to decrease the likelihood of any type of uh, adverse reactions. And uh, the product's going to last longer, and which means I'm going to save money. And I definitely you know, like that idea. So I'm going to reduce it all the way down to 15% uh, oils and 85% water, uh, which is down from the present mixture, which is a 50-50 mixture, all right? And I'm gonna go ahead and go do that today. Um, so I know that I have a product that um, is safe and hopefully I'm not gonna lose anything in the efficacy, right? I don't think I'm gonna lose anything in terms of efficacy because I'm looking at a lot of these over-the-counter products and uh, the essential oils basically constitute like 1% of the total mixture, which I think is crazy. And then they have uh, water and chemicals, you know, preservatives like sodium benzoate and stuff like that. So that's what I'm doing.